And today we're going to be talking about a science fiction film called Inuyashiki. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. Ichiro is a middle class man who bought a new house for his family, but they don't seem to be very appreciative of his efforts, complaining how it's smaller than all the houses nearby. The father bought sushi for the family to celebrate, but they don't want any takeouts and instead goes to a restaurant without their old man. Ichiro has no choice but to enjoy the celebration by himself. At work, his boss complains about his new project that's trying to sell energy drinks, which is making the company lose a lot of money. Ichiro apologizes publicly while his manager yells at him in front of all his co-workers. He goes home after a tough day only to see some thug stealing from a man similar to himself. Ichiro turns around in fear only to be spotted by his daughter who blames him for being a coward. While sitting outside his house, Ichiro finds a stray dog abandoned by her master walking towards him. Her name is Hanako and the main character feels a kinship with her right away. The wife sees her husband with the dog and immediately tells him to get rid of her. She hands him a report about his recent medical examination which requires him to do further testings. Ichiro receives a terrible news from the doctor, who tells him that he has stage 4 cancer and only about 3 months to live. He tries calling his wife about the news, but she chooses to ignore him. Ichiro calls his daughter, but she also ignores his phone call. At dinner time, he tries telling his family about his medical condition, but they're too engulfed in themselves and continues to blame the father for every little mishap. The wife demands her husband to get rid of the dog while paying no attention to the pain in her husband's eyes. Ichiro walks his pet out into the streets and wonders if his family will even cry for him after hearing the terrible news. He apologizes to Hanako and tries to leave her behind, but she continues to follow him everywhere he goes. After failing to leave his loyal companion, Ichiro realizes that Hanako is the only thing in this world that cares about him and apologizes profusely for abandoning his friend. He sees another man named Hiro contemplating while sitting in the park, and both of them look up as they see a bright light heading this way. An object hits them with blinding speed, and Ichiro loses consciousness while strange creatures surrounds him as Hanako barks continuously. He wakes up in the morning, finding his dog beside him, and surprisingly, he somehow regained perfect vision without his glasses. Ichiro goes home for breakfast, only to find that he cannot taste any of the food and feels extremely thirsty while drinking water from the fountain. He goes to his room, only to see that smoke is coming out from his left hand. It then turns into a large rifle and shoots what appears to be the soup he drank from earlier. His whole body begins transforming and opening everywhere, showing mechanical parts underneath the skin. Ichiro manages to pull himself together as his wife walks into the room. It turns out that Ichiro's daughter, Mary, goes to the same class as Hiro, the man who was with Ichiro last night. He goes to his friend, Choko, and decides to show him the power he obtained from the encounter last night by shooting a bird from the distance with his fingers. Hiro then takes his friend to an underground parking where he demonstrates the ability to control cars with his mind and proceeds to reveal his mechanical body from underneath. At the same time, Ichiro leaves work and sees an injured pigeon on the floor. He holds the animal in compassion and surprisingly is able to heal it to full health and sends it flying again. He hears another voice of suffering from afar and quickly arrives to the hospital where a boy is close to dying from a terminal illness. Ichiro puts his hand on the boy and manages to bring him back to health just like the pigeon. Seeing the mother reunite with her son, he goes off in happiness knowing that he saved someone's life. On the other side, Hiro brings his friend to the bullies and demands that they apologize and give back the money they took. He grabs onto the bully's arm and hurts him until he gets exactly what he wants. Hiro points his finger towards the man, and just before he kills, Choco stops him, telling him it's enough. His apparent bravery catches the attention of a girl named Xi'an, who confesses to him in the hallway. Hiro thanks her for the compliments and walks away with a smile. We learn that his mother is divorced because Hiro's father left her for another woman. Even though she was betrayed by her ex-husband, she still shows care for his health and wants Hiro to spend time with his father. He goes to their house and spends time eating dinner with their family, but you can see that their happiness only infuriates Hiro from within as he believes that it was stolen from his mother. While playing with his half-brother, Hiro points his finger towards the family and hesitates about pulling the trigger. He eventually stops as he looks at his father and realizes that he still cares for the man despite what he's done. 
Hero walks home alone and hears all the happiness from the families nearby. He breaks into one of the houses and proceeds to shoot everyone inside. Ichiro hears this from the hospital after saving more people and rushes to the house where he finds the young girl with a bullet hole on her head. He tries saving her with his power but realizes that it only works on living creatures. He walks in the living room and sees Hiro standing over the dead bodies. Ichiro recognizes the man from the park earlier but Hiro attacks him and sends him flying before he can say a single word. He recovers unharmed and rushes out of the house only to see Hiro flying off into the distance. Choco meets with Hiro and suspects his friend is responsible for the murders that occurred last night since they all died with gunshots but no bullets. Hiro admits that he killed the family but justifies this by believing that he's a god now. He says that strangers die every day no matter what happens and they shouldn't feel sorry for the people that they don't even know. Choco refuses to accept this and backs off in fear. He tells Hiro that they can't be friends anymore and runs away from the murderer. Hiro goes home to his mother and to his surprise, she tells her son that he must live with his father from now on. She explains that she has inoperable cancer and the doctors told her that she won't live much longer. Hiro embraces his mother and cries while swearing that he would never allow her to die. Ichiro goes home and tells his family that he was demoted by the company. The wife yells at him, worrying about their mortgage while the daughter becomes angry at his father for his incompetence. Ichiro laments about his inability to protect his own family and doubts that he's able to stop the murders and help others. Suddenly, he hears Choco's voice praying that someone can stop his best friend from killing more people. Ichiro realizes that he has to stop doubting himself and resolves to use his powers to stop Hiro from murdering others. He transforms into his robot form and flies towards the sky while carrying Hanako with him. Ichiro arrives to the park and meets Choco. They talk about what happened on that night, and Choco speculates that aliens must have reconstructed both Ichiro and Hiro. He thinks that they both must have the same abilities and decides to train Ichiro based on what he saw Hiro is able to do. They go to a junkyard and Ichiro tries shooting a tin can with his hand. Let's just say that the old man has a lot of training to do before he can even come close to beating his rival. On the other side, Hiro goes to see the doctor with his mother only to find out that the cancer has fully disappeared from her body, most likely due to her son healing her with his powers. They walk home together and Hiro tries to convince his mother to enjoy life and go on vacations. He promises that he will make her happy as her life has been difficult from the beginning. Their happiness don't last however, when they're visited by a group of police officers demanding to question Hiro about the murders. He runs off immediately while his mother screams for his name. Hiro tosses the police officers around like rag dolls and sprints onto the parking lot. He uses his powers to kill three of the officers while others fire at him with no effects. Hiro jumps down from the stairway and proceeds to fly away from the area. The news of his escape travels quickly through the media and Hiro quickly becomes a fugitive with nowhere to hide. Luckily, he runs into Xion and she decides to take him in despite his current status. We learn that Xion is living with her grandma, the only relative that she has left. Her parents died of illness years ago and she doesn't think that she can live long either. Meanwhile, Ichiro finally makes some progress on his training but gets tired easily from all the exertions. He becomes thirsty again and grabs the energy drink from his company. Choco speculates that the water must fuel their bodies as they become very thirsty after using their weapons. Ichiro begins feeling pain from his body and shoots out the liquid just like he did last time with the soup. Choco quickly realizes that it may be the sodium contents that's causing his body to malfunction and they may be able to use this to their advantage later. At night, Hiro watches the news about his mother only to see that everyone is blaming her for what her son did. She apologizes repeatedly but receives no sympathy from anyone. He falls into tears, realizing that the crimes he committed is now being paid by the person he loves the most in this world. The news then informs him that they found his mother dead in her apartment. Apparently, she killed herself after being pressured by the media. Hiro goes into shock at this realization. He begins reading the comments on the video only to see everyone cursing at his mother's name. Hiro becomes enraged and uses his powers to hack into the commenter's computers. He begins shooting everyone through their screens causing widespread mortality across the nation as the people fall dead after looking at their devices. Xion finds Hiro unable to sleep at night and tries to comfort him, but the man tells her that he's responsible for killing all those people. 
He transforms in front of her and tries to scare her away, but the girl refuses to believe that the man she loves is a killer. Hiro rushes her outside and takes her to the sky, asking Shion if this frightens her, but the only thing that the girl is scared of is if he left. He realizes that she's the only person left in this world who cares about him and promises to protect her and stay with her forever. Hiro is finally able to sleep and Shion smiles and says that he's very human after all. She goes to the kitchen and feels something beside her. Shion turns around only to see an army of soldiers pointing their guns at her. Hiro sees this and grabs her immediately while the soldiers fire continuously at his body. He turns around and retaliates with fury, killing every one of them. When everything settles, he notices that Shion is already dead with multiple gun wounds on her body. Hiro cries at his friend's death and resolves to kill everyone in the country. Ichiro sees the news reports about the recent murders and warns his family to turn off their phones, but none of them listens and proceeds to go out despite the dangers. Mary meets up with her friends while they climb to the top of a high-rise to enjoy the sceneries. Hiro begins broadcasting himself on every single network and tells everyone his intentions of destroying the country in order to avenge his family. No one takes him seriously until he begins shooting at the masses and people are dropping dead everywhere. Everybody panics and runs in chaos, but there is nowhere to hide from his attacks. Ichiro manages to hijack the signal, and Choco tells everyone to throw away their phones in order to prevent the attacks. Without any way to reach the masses, Hiro decides to attack humanity directly by firing numerous missiles at the city and causing explosions everywhere. Ichiro finds Hiro and tries to convince him to stop, but his words fail to reach the young man as he begins chasing Ichiro through the sky. They go through the buildings in the city, and Hiro follows the old man closely. He begins shooting a barrage of missiles, but Ichiro manages to evade them as they explode right behind him. They fly through an underground tunnel, and Ichiro nearly gets hit by the upcoming traffic. As they fly closer to Mary, the father begins hearing her plead for help as her building was struck by one of the missiles. The old man rushes towards his daughter, but gets attacked by Hiro from behind, which stuns his flight system and forces him to crash land on the side of a building. Ichiro tries shooting at the man, but Hiro dodges the attacks and kicks him through the building. They crash into a helicopter and knocks it towards the walls, causing it to explode. They land on a rooftop, and Ichiro continues to beg Hiro to stop killing. The young man takes out a bottle of water and tries to recharge, but Ichiro destroys it. Hiro charges at him and takes the water from the old man. He drinks the whole bottle and continues to fire missiles, sending Ichiro flying into the sky. Hiro chases the old man as they fly further into the atmosphere. He fires more missiles at Ichiro, who gets pushed by the explosion into outer space. Hiro punches him and takes this opportunity to grab the old man, planning to finish the fight with a final attack. To his surprise, instead of firing missiles, he shot out the water he drank earlier which turns out to be energy drink replaced by Ichiro. Hiro falls back as his body malfunctions. Ichiro transforms his arm into a rifle and shoots numerous projectiles at Hiro, sending him flying towards Earth with the explosions. The old man flies towards the building where his daughter is at, and sees Mary lying motionless on the ground. He tries everything in order to resurrect her, and manages to bring back her breath. They embrace each other as tears fall from the old man's eyes. Suddenly, he gets kicked from the side which sends him flying to the walls. It turns out that Hiro survived the fall from earlier and returns to take his vengeance. He learns that Mary is the old man's daughter and begins attacking her, shooting her stomach as Ichiro interferes. Hiro punches the old man around like a rag doll and continues to beat him in front of his daughter. He grabs Mary and takes her to the edge of the building. Hiro wants the father to experience the same despair which he feels every moment and throws the daughter off the building. Seeing his family about to get killed, Ichiro charges all his energy and flies towards Hiro. He crashes into the man and breaks off his arm while flying towards his daughter. Ichiro charges downwards and sees that Mary is still falling. He reaches out on the girl and manages to catch her right before hitting the ground. Mary wakes up after being healed by her father, and realizes that her old man is a superhero. She sees him fly off as he rushes to save as many people as he could. Although the government has confirmed Hiro's death, they haven't really found his body on sight, only shards of metals of unknown origins. Ichiro continues to have dinner with his family like everything is normal, but his daughter now sees that her father is a true hero. Choco goes home and to his surprise, sees that Hiro is still alive, but missing an arm after the fight. He's glad to see that his friend didn't die and offers him to play the newest video game. 
Choco turns around after finding the game, only to see that Hiro has left, knowing that his presence would only endanger his best friend. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.